name is Lucas Harris, and this is a theorbo. The theorbo was invented in Italy sometime around 1600, and it's a member of the lute family. All of the instruments in the Renaissance were made in different sizes, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. What they did was they took the bass member of the lute family and they tried to tune it up to the pitch level of a tenor or an alto lute and they broke the top two strings. They put thicker strings on to replace the ones that broke and tune them down an octave from where they should be. And that's why we get this thing that we call re-entrant tuning. In that tuning, the third string of the theorbo is the highest pitch string. And you have these uh, two strings at the top that, that are lower than they should be. What they discovered when they tuned the instrument that way is uh, that you could play very full chords, which were still pitched quite low. They added this crazy neck extension to the instrument. And uh, this houses an extra octave of low bass strings that are tuned in a scale. And you can retune them according to the key that you're playing in. Right around this time, there was this new style of singing called recitar cantando, or recitative style singing. And they wanted to have solo singers who sang in a way that Im imitated speech. And they wanted it to be accompanied by plucked string instruments that are very, very flexible, so that the singing could be very free and natural sounding. And they found that they could get quite a rich accompaniment with this instrument without it covering the singer or getting in the way. This particular instrument was built by a dear friend of mine named Ray Nurse. And Ray is kind of a Renaissance man. He's one of the smartest people I know, and he has been a, a singer, a professor, a lute maker, a lutenist, uh, a lecturer. And he made this instrument based on some different Venetian models. Recently, he sold the instrument to Early Music Vancouver. So now the instrument belongs to the institution. And so now every time I come to Vancouver, there's this instrument that, which is waiting for me. And I, I don't have to have the stress of trying to travel with my instrument. The most important part of playing the theorbo is using your right hand thumb, which is the part of your hand which plays bass notes. The way we play bass notes is to always come to rest on the next string, which gives you a kind of deeper tone, whether you're up in this register or down on the low diapasons, or even the very lowest diapasons. Diapasons are uh, what we call these really low, long bass strings that are not fretted. You can't sort of fret them with the left hand. They're just played as open strings and tuned in a scale, like a harp. Because of that re-entrant tuning, we have a special arpeggio that uses a combination of figures that often makes the highest note come out last. Whereas if I just play like a regular um, arpeggio, which uh, on a guitar or a lute that would go from bottom to top, the notes come out, out of order, and sometimes we want that. That can kind of be a nice effect. But if we use our special, we call it a Capsburger arpeggio, uh, which comes from one of the composers of the instrument who describes it. And we get the, the highest note com comes out last, which is kind of clean and neat. One of the important techniques that came out right around the time this instrument was invented were uh, slurs, or what we call hammer-ons and pull-offs. So we have things like... which weren't used before that. In the Renaissance, all the, even like a very fast ornament, all the notes were plucked. Or even doing a scale. Mm -hmm. 
so the technique is that we play each string once and just and then you just kind of pluck the strings with your left hand so that was a, an exciting new technique that the theorbo composers used a lot in the solo music you can strum the instrument too in italy you don't get so much indication of that but in france Sometimes you strum up and down with the index finger. And uh, we don't have any original sources that describe this, but often in operas, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll um, you know, use the full potential of the instrument and kind of go nuts. This instrument was used in all kinds of different ways, especially for the first operas, but it was also used for secular songs, it was used in church music, it was used to accompany instrumental sonatas, and there were a lot of people who were singers who accompanied themselves playing this instrument. Although its primary function is accompanying, there were also people who wrote solo pieces, and so there's a, a small body of virtuosic solo literature for the instrument. Apparently when the first Theorbo traveled from Italy to England, they were suspicious of anything coming from a Catholic country like Italy. And when the Theorbo arrived at customs in Dover, the customs officials looked at it and were totally convinced that it was some kind of a war machine that was going to be used to uh, murder the queen. And so they confiscated it.